Um, I'm, here, I, I'm, I'm deeply honored, obviously, to be the, the first reader here, but also to be Courtney's husband and last day's father. I don't know what I did in a past life to, uh, what's that? I'm a bad guy. I don't know what I did in a past life to be able to, uh, to roll the dice and, and win like that on two separate occasions, but they're pretty powerful people to be around, and um, both of these poems that I'm going to read would not exist without the two of them. And so as a witness to the HBC experience, I've always been, a, a, my awareness as, as husband and partner is that the HBC or any, any birth, is a, it's a dialogue between the mother and, and the child. Is really how, that's how I internalize, how I dealt with my own healing and grief through this. And um, so somewhere, 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 far, far back in their coexistence, they've made a pact to, for this to happen. And I believe that's true for all mothers and all children, and that's a, that's a blessing. So as we honor women who've been through this today, um, let's all think of our children who gave us the opportunity to have this experience. Um, those little monsters that destroy us on so many levels until we become new people. So every day, Lazaday at 6 a.m. yells, Daddy, wake up! And every day I think, God, I'm such a better person for hearing that, so... <laughs> <laughs> it's really 5 a.m. It's not 6 a.m. So these two, yeah, so uh, the chronology of the poems, uh, the, the first, the poem I'm going to read happened around last day's first, uh, first year, her first birthday. The second poem happened within her first 24 hours of, of life. And this is the poem from the book. It's entitled uh, Staples. The stapled woman sneezing holds one hand to her mouth the other, her incision. She doesn't laugh when the staples are out for months. A year after the staples, she asks her husband if he remembers. He says, forget. She shows him a picture of the staples, a fence across a meadow. From the shower, she sees her daughter see the scar, says, the earth opened, you lifted out. And then uh, this poem, as a, as a, thanks, Leslie, and thank you. <laughs> I take her everywhere. <laughs> um, this, so this, this poem, I didn't. So as a writer, and I've been doing it for a long time. I didn't write for about a like six week spell before the birth, and then I didn't write for a six week spell after the birth, except this one poem, which came out in the hospital room. And um, so there's one piece of biographical information. I just want to do a little preface here. It re references some um, juvenile delinquency on Courtney's part. And I don't want to, it's not an indictment on her mom. Okay, her mom, her mom did a fine job, but sometimes we just arrive with our own ideas. So. This, uh, I, this had a different title, but the only title that really works is the title that it is now, which is Lazaday. This is for you. Lazaday. I hope you think of me as that guy with the warm chest you slept on for hours your first night alive in room 2506 of Emmanuel's family wing. But I hope I never remind you of that last day. Not when you're 16 and steal a knife from the mall kiosk because you inherited your mother's petty theft thrill-based genes. I hope I don't remind you about your birth, how your mother labored three days at home until your bowels began to empty inside her. We drove in dark quiet to the hospital where she was numbed and splayed open on the surgical slab. Her bladder pushed aside so two rubbered hands could thumb you out and away from all you knew. You were upside down from how you should have been. Breach, wanting to enter the world with your toes in your mouth. I hope I don't tell you that the surgeon handed you off under white lights to a woman who was not your mother who scrubbed the blue from your skin as we gave you the name that came to your mother when you were just a splitting cell and she dreamt of having lasagna in our oven and made up the word Lazday. In the OR, the name Lazday stained my lips red as I said it and you cried your first breaths. In the future, when people ask you about your name, tell a story all your own. Flex your wild thumbs. Talk about unicorns, forest nymphs, dragons, and if you shorten your name, do better than some text generation key punch, because I hate that. <laughs> but you shouldn't care what your father likes or hates. 
And when you don't care, I won't care even if I do. What I'll care about is that you bloom into a creature beyond your mother and me. That your legs grow long, your eyes speak poems, your mind never takes something as truth just because someone says it's true. I hope your whole generation of upside down children, born in the year of the metal rabbit, bury the nails of war, burn all currency, that you achieve a clan of rarefied vision. But you don't have to do that, Lazaday. Not if you just want to be the girl with gum in your hair. If you want to sleep with batting gloves on, if you want to fall in love before you're old enough to know it hurts. I hope you hear songs in the sway of leaves and shadow, that you recognize the sound you make as you feed at your mother is music, that you know your mother's voice is melody, and that I am merely a flute, and that you, Lazaday, are the wind, the drum, the rhythm of new hot blood. Thanks, everyone.